hello uh mingana i would say good morning i don't know where you are in the world but uh what are the bonjour uh, that, that that's enough uh, international languages uh, for the day i hope to learn some other languages uh, in my years or in some years to come hello i'm kwekudia and uh, i'll be taking you through some lectures on r and performing your statistical analysis uh, if you are into biostatistics or epidemiology you will find the content mostly useful if you're in other fields of uh, life uh, math in the especially the maths and sciences you may just learn a couple of uh, you could learn the r program and see for the statistics be more skewed towards uh, public health and uh, epidemiology that's what i do so unfortunately i can only talk about the things i do of course the knowledge is not limited you would apply the same principles to analyzing your personal data irrespective of where you are coming from but most of the examples will be epidemiology data uh, yeah maybe once a while we we'll analyze some financial data to look for patterns especially when you are dealing with numbers so Make sure you subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, do uh, bienvenue. I think that's welcome in French. Uh, excuse my French. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, do. Okay, so you may ask, what is R? R is a, a statistical programming language. It does statistics better than any other language that I know of. And I know quite a few. I wouldn't say, uh, in my opinion, is the best. You may have your different opinion, yes, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, this is my channel, and I say R is the best for statistical analysis, and I will demonstrate why. Just uh, be patient with me. I'll demonstrate why you wouldn't and you shouldn't attempt to use any other. Uh, software to analyze your data uh, especially for the SVSS followers uh, you may want to at this point uh, no don't pause the video you watch maybe I'll convince you or along the line if you're able to convince me we all start doing SPSS uh, the good old days okay so R is a its primary purpose as I said earlier is just to perform statistical analysis you can use it for other things too Maybe a calculator but why would you want to launch r just to do uh, calculations you could use it for other things like web development but it's limited in that area if you want to do your e-commerce website i don't see why you would want to do it in r if you manage to do it in r to link me up i would like to connect and see how you manage to do an e-commerce website with r okay r is a free and open source free to use open source uh, there is a community behind it who contribute to its development you could join but we are not going to do that today nor tomorrow you actually need to practice for a long time uh, if you are watching this video most likely you're a beginner if you're an advanced user and you just want to maybe make fun of me you are not welcome to skip to uh, a better video than what you are watching now you are most likely misusing your time you are not wasting your time but if you're an intermediary beginner uh, i actually do recommend you start watching from here and not uh, some other video don't call so okay so r is uh, single threaded it does one thing at a time that comes with some advantages and some disadvantages which may be in the course of uh, the series you can look at whether a single threaded operation has an uh, i wouldn't say it has an advantage but in some scenarios you may enjoy the single threadedness okay so again r does one thing at a time that's what a single traded means if you are not a technical person you don't need to worry so much about something being single uh, single traded you mostly often would not even notice that it's doing one thing at a time it's that fast okay r is interpreted you write your code it gets executed it doesn't get compiled like a, a brother a brother python okay now there are compiled, uh, compiled languages like uh, C Sharp, like Java. They get compiled and they come with some advantages. 
would I wish R were compiled? Given my experience, no, it's good as it is now. It doesn't need to be compiled before it works, but if you are writing uh, like a production ready code, like uh, in C sharp and other things, you you struggle if it's not compiled. We are not going to discuss uh, those things. Uh, let's see if that's uh, be for another year, not 2020. We just came from uh, the coronavirus pandemic. We don't want another pandemic between compiled and interpreted languages. Okay. So to continue, why are uh, if why would you want to learn R or use R in the first place? Well, if you want to perform statistical analysis, obviously. We've said that earlier on if you want to perform statistical analysis i do not see any better substitutes than r i hope to convince you if you are unconvinced as at now relax i'll convince you in the course of the series just make sure you watch the next one in the video now for academic writing it's no surprise that most of the or a lot of the academic facilities use R for the analysis than other language, than other software. You could use SPSS. Keep in mind, it is not about the software you are using. It's more about what you know and what you can do. Uh, I've used Stata before and it was very good when I used to use it. Of course, I wasn't doing the point and click. I learned uh, programming before learning statistical programming. So of course, I like to write code and not to point and click. In the, at the end of this video, I'll discuss why you shouldn't do point and click, and I'll summarize the reason why I to date I may be able to use SPSS after all, it's a point and click, but I have not spent more than uh, 10 minutes my whole life on SPSS, and even where I am now, I may not be going to uh, back to learning anything in SPSS unless maybe it comes with uh, a lot of backs then i would consider working for the spss in the absence of that once again it's not about spss it's about what you can do and what you cannot do if you want to do reproducible results yes you want to reproduce your results and one reason why we avoid point and click interfaces because of reproducibility uh, it will it will surprise you a lot but you often have to do run your analysis again <laughs> maybe uh, 10 times in a week you have to rerun your analysis and if you are pointing and clicking you have to point and click again that's why we write code to save ourselves the energy of having to uh, pointing pointing and cl clicking again the whole reason why we learn computer programming is to be lazy if you are not being lazy then you are not doing your computer programming work if you want to develop dashboard reports or develop apis that's uh, produce graphs and tables your best bet is to use our the api plumber hopefully in the latter stages of this series we will look at the plumber i actually learned the plumber before shine and maybe in the course i will actually do plumber because i think it's much more straightforward than uh, shiny even though i enjoy using shiny a lot so, uh, i've used uh, plumber once on a serious project didn't use it again but uh, I like the simplicity of uh, Plumber and I would look at it uh, whether it likes it or not we'll look at Plumber we want to plumb something okay so why would you not want to use R I'm sure uh, maybe should I skip this because you wouldn't be on this channel if you didn't want to use R or unless you are here to maybe go randomly suggest it to you but a situation like machine learning uh, I think you R may not be more suitable for it and not because R is not good at it I actually feel it may be better doing your machine learning in R but there is more hype around Python than R when it comes to machine learning and uh, uh, those areas yes uh, to me you could do it in R and you should do it in R but if you are looking to interact more with people who do machine learning you are most likely going to find them using python than r like if you join kaggle kaggle.com and you should if you haven't if you are interested in data science and other things you should actually uh, subscribe to kaggle get yourself some content uh, some uh, introductory 
data and work with it. It's very good. I recently joined it and I am enjoying my stay there so far. Involve yourself in some few competitions, learn one or two things. Okay. So if you want to do general purpose programming like develop desktop applications, you actually have no business uh, learning R. And that is because uh, it's not suitable for those things. You could, but why should you? Then again, the reason why maybe people struggle with R, uh, R is very common with developers other than uh, statisticians. The reason I can see how you can teach a nine year old uh, R and statistics because if you are going to see them R, it, need, it needs to come with the statistics. That is why it is not popular, especially among younger developers. But as they grow and they mature into the field of data science, they come to the realization that there is no better job. Uh, there's no better tool for the job than R. Okay. So uh, I think this is how your learning curve is going to be like. You are going to begin at zero. Some few weeks later, you would have added. A month later, you would have risen. You can start bragging about this time. But around three months, let me pick a different marker. Around three months, I expect you to be here. Uh, these two months, these three months, then you'll be adding gradually onto your learning curve after three months. Uh, three months, I think, is a reasonable time to acquaint yourself with a lot of the techniques uh, using R. Okay, so are there any competitors? I wouldn't say there are that many competitors but there are some software you can use for your statistical analysis. I'm going to list them not in any particular order. So there is SAS. SAS is a paid software. It's, uh, I understand it's very good. I've never used it before and I may not consider it though. There is Theta. I've actually used Theta before. It's, uh, it's, it's nice, it's good. I have a lot of complaints, but we are not going to talk about my complaints with Stata. I don't think uh, there's a Stata hitters uh, channel, so I used Stata before, and as recently as uh, last week, today is uh, I think uh, today is fourth of June, so uh, around me the latter part of me I actually did some things in Stata. I have it installed on. Now it's, it's a paid software program; it's not for free. So keep that in mind before you want to go and get the data. Then there is the all famous uh, Python and his uh, brother Julia. Let's talk about SPSS. We will talk about Python and Julia uh, later. But it's also open source. It's free to use. There is a lot of community around it. But uh, I'll choose Aruba Stata. Uh, I'll choose Aruba Python. On any given day, uh, I'm an, I would say I mean, I'm at the intermediary level when it comes to Python. I'm trying to up my skills. I'm not saying don't learn it. You should, you should learn every programming language that you are capable of learning. But given what I've seen and what I know, I don't see why I would want to do Python for any serious project. If it's a hobby, fine. Okay. So SPSS, I think is one of the uh, the uh, not until university, I had not even heard of uh, any other uh, an, uh, software for analysis except XPSS. Oh, fortunately and unfortunately, I never got to use it, so they didn't fall in love with it. There is Tableau. Tableau is uh, especially suitable for developing graphs and presentations. I want to believe it is very good at it. I've seen a couple of videos discussing Tableau. It seems like a very easy thing to do. But remember, isn't e something being easy doesn't mean it is better. If something being complicated either doesn't mean that it is also better. Okay. Then there is Power BI. Power BI is a product by Microsoft. I think they will integrate it into PowerPoint very soon. Uh, I'm aware. I may not even want to uh, experiment with Power BI. For now, maybe in the future I would consider. So who are those who use R? We've already mentioned that it's very common uh, in academia. A lot of people in academia use R for their research. Now, professional researchers and students alike all use R. Uh, it's also very popular among those in the 
healthcare industry and the pharmaceutical industry. This, they like to use R for its uh, simplicity and its effectiveness at uh, doing what they want you to do. So where would I, where are, where is R not used? It's not very popular among software developers, and I've explained the reason. You are not going to start your uh, software journey by learning R when you also have to learn the statistics. Let's face it, a lot of people uh, don't like statistics as such. So how would you want to? And you can't teach a nine-year-old R because you eventually have to teach uh, the statistics and other things that come with it. So for a lot of software developers, they start their life with something like uh, JavaScript, Python. Those are very simple and straightforward languages. And others may want to begin with Java, C Sharp. I think there is Rust now. There is PHP. Yes, PHP. Go off most PHP. You are not going to talk about PHP today. So, a lot of software developers actually don't use R. And as I said, they are not into statistical analysis. But we are. So, we are going to actually learn R. But if the reason why you are here is to just learn software development it's okay to create a video you've watched enough you, you're already 16 minutes into watching the video you may want to quit at that point okay so uh to get started you just simply need to install your r if you're on windows install r tools very important then install r studio they are very simple things to do. We are not going to go over how to install them. We just need to accept the defaults. The all the defaults are actually sensible defaults, so we are not going to worry so much about it. Okay, so let's talk a bit about R Studio. Now, R Studio is a very uh, it's an ID. An ID stands for Integrated Development Environment. It assists you to write uh, computer code. That's all it does. You don't require R Studio to write R. No, you could use other. You could even use Notepad on uh, a Windows PC to uh, write your R code. You can write your R code with Nano if you are in uh, using Linux, any of the Linux uh, distros. You don't require R Studio, but a lot of people actually use R Studio more than any other. Then there is also JASP. The other IDs like JASP. Uh, I learned about I learned about JASP uh, I think last year. It's very interesting, but I like to write code and not point and click so much. But it's it's a good place if you are somebody who is into pointing and clicking but still want to use the best software for your statistical analysis. You may want to consider JASP. There is also Visual Studio Code, but you have to install some extensions in order to use Visual Studio Code. If you have not moved on from 2017, the good old times, you could use uh, Visual Studio 2017 to write your R script. We are not going to go there. If for some strange reasons you can't use R Studio, I encourage you to use Visual Studio Code. Uh, there may be other IDs over there, but I would recommend either R Studio or Visual Studio Code to write your uh, R script. Remember, you need to install some extensions before you use your Visual Studio code. Okay. Once again, you don't need an ID. You can even use Notepad or Notepad++. I recently saw a new version of Notepad++ and I was impressed. Notepad++, uh, the PHP developers. I hope you have missed Notepad++. Okay, so, uh, as I said, R even comes with its own editor if you want to write your code. You don't need R Studio, but a lot of people use R Studio, and in my experience, it's very good writing your R code. So, we'll go with R Studio for the tutorial. Okay, so we'll end the video here. Uh, if you are, you should be happy. If you're not happy, I want to blame you for not being happy at the video. Uh, it's not my fault, it's yours. So remember to like the video if you did really like it. Don't go without liking it. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel whether you liked it or not. That is a must. Or else, you won't see the next video.
I'll make sure I block you. Have a nice day.